Welcome to IdeaGen TV live from the Embassy of Ethiopia here in Washington, D.C. Today, I am so thrilled and honored to have with us Merdula Pedinti, Branding Director, and Angie Carlos, Head of Administration, Operations, and Outreach from Limitless Solutions. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yes. Oh, it's our pleasure. And it's our pleasure because what you're doing is transformational for so many young folks across the planet with the bionic arm that you're displaying here today. And I'm going to let you all talk in as much detail as possible about it. But would you kindly inform us and our global audience, the millions of folks that are watching this program across the planet on IdeaGen TV, what is it that Limitless Solutions does and what is your mission? Yeah. So Limitless Solutions uh, is a nonprofit, um, and we're based out of the University of Central Florida, which we'll talk about more later on. Um, but we create accessible technology, um, and the core of our mission is about empowering individuals with accessible technology, um, whether that is creating the technology to make their lives easier, um, or just even giving them access to the technology in the first place, whether that's through reducing cost, um, through partnerships um, and the main area that we focus on for our uh, technology is children um, who oftentimes struggle to get access the most to these types of devices. And not only do we talk about you know access and cost and stuff, but um, customization, um, as you can see with the prosthetic here, um, the children get to customize um, what the prosthetic looks like and it's an extension of their identity. That's how we always like to talk about it, that people don't you know, oftentimes think about, that this is uh, something that helps them form their identity in a society that oftentimes tells them that they are not enough because of their limb difference. And that's kind of the broader goal for us is through our other initiatives that we'll talk about more, um, our undergraduate student program and K through 12 outreach, we educate people on changing stigma around disability and limb difference, that um, there's nothing wrong with you. If you have a disability or a limb difference, um, you are just as important as anyone else in the room and you have just as much of an important voice to contribute to society that way. How powerful is that? And would you kindly share a, su a specific success story for a limbit list that has stuck with you? For me, it's empowerment. We have met so many bionic kids and seeing how it's changed their outlook. I had one girl, we were taking pictures of her and she walked over and she goes, well, what do the pretty girls do? And she was absolutely beautiful and perfect before she ever got a bionic arm. But for her, it unlocked her ability to see her own beauty. And that empowerment is why we do what we do. You know, that's incredible. And so what are some of the future goals for Limitless Solutions that you're particularly excited about? So uh, like we were kind of talking about earlier, um, FDA approval is a big goal of ours because when we get this device approved, that unlocks the doors that are kind of holding us back to get this device accessible to even more children across the entire country. And then um, with partnerships like this, platforms like this, with you guys at IdeaGen, this is what's going to unlock us to get this even further across the globe um, to children who need access to devices in general, um, especially um, who those who've suffered, you know, trauma and stuff like that in, in war zones and things like that. And that's, you know, our far future goal. Um, and that's where it starts here is to be able to get uh, more hospital partnerships, which is how we give the arm out to get the data that we need to, to get the device approved um, and get, you know, hospitals and doctors in to be able to give this technology to the children that need it across the entire country. Rodolo, that, that, that's just profound. And so could you talk about your partnership with the University of Central Florida and how you all collaborate together? Well, Limitless was born at the University of Central Florida, but it, as you said, all day with everybody, you can't do anything alone. And so they're able to amplify our impact with their scale and helping us in infrastructure. We also, our undergraduate students that Merdula was talking about, our University of Central Florida students from, and they're multidisciplinary, from ad PR to engineering to research. So we're able to kind of bridge all of those areas and break down those silos. In addition to also being able to unleash the potential of our bionic kids and our undergraduate students. 
and how empowering is that? I mean, that, that, that's going to be particularly rewarding for you both and everyone associated with Limitless and UCF and everyone else. I mean, what an inspiring project. It's incredible when we get to hear our students talk about how they now will leave and graduate and go to companies and take an accessibility mindset with them right. into programming an app or whatever they may be working on next. And I think that's, that's something that's extra rewarding in addition to changing the lives of Bionic Kids. And so customization, um, how do you begin to customize each arm for the particular person? Yeah, so there's a couple ways that we, we kind of tackle customization because that's such an important part of the mission. Um, one you see obviously right off the bat is customization through um, identity. Uh, so uh, one of our kind of name to fame moments was the one of the first children really wanted his arm to look like Iron Man. Um, and that uh, one, like, one thing led to another, and we were able to get uh, partnered with Robert Downey Jr. to be able to deliver that arm to that child. Um, you know, Iron Man himself giving uh, a child his own Iron Man arm. Um, and so the children, when they're accepted into the trial, they get to uh, go to a customization portal. So the things like Nike, shoe customizers and stuff like that, our team worked um, in collaboration with everyone to really brainstorm a platform where a child can uh, go onto the website and pick, you know, exactly what it looks like, whether they want to customize the colors to fit a, a character that they love from a video game or a movie, a sports team, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and it's really cool when we first launched that to see children just kind of play with it for hours. And we're like, they're so excited to be able to um, see all the possible ways they can combine their different favorite identity expressions into their arm. And that's a big part, uh, one aspect of customization that helps increase um, or decrease rather rejection rates, right. which is a big problem with prosthetics. A lot of people, even if they have access, even if they can afford it, eventually they might end up, you know, tossing it aside because they have no emotional connection to it. They don't care about mm. the way that it looks. It's too hard to use. Um, so that's one big aspect is getting the child to buy into it immediately through customizing um, a part of themselves in the prosthetic because I mean it is a part of themselves it is their arm it is a part of their body and uh, that piece was really important for us to really push um, to help their development in their identity um, and then in other ways uh, the arm is also fully functional so it is powered through uh, what's called EMG technology, electromyography. So it's kind of similar to EKG that you put on the chest to read the heart rate. But instead, we put it on a muscle and the child's muscle flex is red. You generate uh, an electricity when you flex your muscle. And through that, it'll open and close the arm. Um, you can also program different gestures and stuff. That's kind of another new technology we're working to, to expand. So at flexing at different rates, you can customize it to do different gestures like pointing or Incredible. you know pinching and stuff like that. Sure. Um, and that's so that's another way our team developed an app so that the families can customize, you know, how hard or how soft a child flexes because everyone's uh, sure. uh, signal is different um, to make it easier for them to be able to have control and feel like they know how to use the device, which is another issue that happens with rejection rates is eventually it's just too hard to learn. It doesn't actually work the way they want it to, and then they toss it aside for that reason as well. Um, and then the final reason that Angie kind of mentioned earlier is the socket design, um, making sure that it's comfortable when you attach it to the limb, which that's also another issue with prosthetics is it's it's too heavy, it's uncomfortable, there's a lot of cuffs get sweaty, and it's um, really hard to navigate and use. And so um, it was cool to see the other conversations earlier today. We're using things like AI and programming to generate the 3D models for the cuffs so right. that they fit perfectly to each child's limb and increase the ability for them to keep it keep it on them, not have it be uncomfortable, and have them actually enjoy the experience of having prosthetic. You know, speechless. It's just truly just so inspiring on so many levels. And I'd like to shift a bit to Project Xavier and the impl implications of its implementation. So Project Xavier is kind of taking that same technology that reads the muscle flexes and putting it on the face muscles. So we've been testing this with ALS patients. So that's some of the last muscles that they still have access to as they become more limited in their mobility. So 
the implementation of this is that they're able to drive themselves around. That ability mm -hmm. to control where you're able to go, to be able to move is, can be life-changing for caregivers that may get a little, you know, a little fatigue from caring for a loved one. And it also gives that loved one the ability to drive around and take themselves around. We have video games that train how to use both devices so that we're able to help um, them learn how to use these in safe environments. That is just incredible. And so could you tell us a little bit about Limitless Solutions clinical trials? This yeah. we talked a little bit about today in some of our interviews. How do they work? Yeah, so we distribute these technologies through hospital partnerships. Um, so we work very closely with hospitals in different parts of the country. That's kind of our doorway to get this technology access to people in different regions. And through conducting clinical trials on the technology is how we give right now in our current setup uh, access um, to the to the technology for participants in a trial. So um, you will do it in like cohorts, depending on how the hospital wants to organize it. So um, right now we currently are um, undertaking two clinical trials that we recently announced. Um, so we're starting to bring in participants and usually it's around 20, 25 is who we're working with right now. We've done a study and we concluded it previously where we did another cohort of about 18. Um, so the children will receive the device um, we did uh, clinical studies with, with Project Xavier as well, and there were five patients in that. Um, and that's basically, we study over a course of like 12 to 14 months. It'll vary depending on uh, different hospitals. Um, and we just see what impact the technology has on, on people's lives as they're using it um, and see what we can learn from the data and then have that to be able to then eventually present to the, to the FDA to say like, this device is actually making is actually improving people's lives in these measurable ways. Incredible. And so what can those listening do to further support your mission? So I think one of the biggest things, um, you know, aside from, of course, we're a nonprofit, so uh, donations to our cause is what keeps our team continuing to be able to have opportunities to create just the technology itself. But um, partnerships are really important as well, as this has been a big theme of today. Um, if we didn't have partners with the, the you know, video game franchises that give us the IP for the arms that, you know, children can use to customize, if we didn't have the hospitals to be able to conduct the clinical trials, um, things like that. Uh, being able to partner with uh, the other people that have the resources and the intelligence um, and the access to the populations so that we can actually give this technology to the people that need it, um, that's a really, a really big need. Um, and then further than that is just education, um, changing the stigma, like I mentioned before, around disability and limb difference not being something so negative. Um, there's nothing wrong with having a disability. And we really try to push that when we work with our students, when we do the K through 12 outreach is teaching, you know, younger children coming up um, and then training the undergraduates going to their future jobs that, you know, accessibility is, is a central tenet that people should have in anything that they create. Um, and that there is uh, nothing wrong with having, you know, Another phrase you like to say is a bionic arm should be as normal as glasses yeah. or braces. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that's kind of the overall message is uh, in, in your own communities, educating people to change their perspective on what it means to be disabled is not, not anything negative. It's very normal. Perdula Pedenti, Angie Carlos, Limitless Solutions, leading the way, changing the world. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.